Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today we'll be looking at paper three, issues and debates for AQA A-level psychology. And I know a lot of people in the comments always ask, but this should be everything that you need for the exam. Um, and obviously just give my channel, a, this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and hopefully I'll be bringing more videos in the future for different subjects. Um, and also I will be doing doing a couple more live streams for the upcoming psychology and sociology exams. So first you're looking at gender bias. This is the preference towards one gender. So uh, you've got alpha bias, which is when differences between genders are exaggerated, relating differences to differences in biology. Whereas beta bias is where differences between genders are minimized or ignored, which often takes place when only one gender is studied. The results are applied to a whole population. Um, and then you've got androcentrism, which is when males, male view, males are viewed as being the centre of culture, assuming male behaviour to be the norm. Um, theories in relation to males are also applied to females. Um, whereas estrocentrism is when female behaviour is seen as a norm, but obviously this is much rarer. This is much rarer than androcentrism. Um, there can be gender bias built into the research design sort of unintentionally, causing either alpha or beta bias. For example, the research question can be based on stereotypes, or obviously like a lot of studies, it's impacted by the participants selected within it. Um, studies showing a difference between genders are more likely to be published than those showing no difference, which can cause research to exaggerate the differences. Um, theories can also be gender biased, so Freud describes male behaviour as a norm, and um, Ash's research was androcentric. Now looking at cultural bias, so culture is a set of customs, social roles and norms and values that are shared by a group of people. Um, researchers assume data that applies in the Western culture will apply to global cultures and it is often assumed that non-Western cultures are primitive and less worthy of study. However, it's not just the fact that people don't want to study there, it can be quite costly and take a lot of time to do cross-cultural research which is often lacking with the researchers. Um, Berry in 1969 developed two main approaches that, that lead to cultural bias. They've got ethic research, which is research from a specific culture and then applied to other cultures to find universal laws. Whereas emic research over exaggerates the differences in culture by purely focusing on one culture and neglecting to look at differences within cultural groups. There's also ethnocentrism, which I think a lot of you probably would have heard of before this module or before this topic, um, with research centering on the culture it's based in. An example of this is Milgram's electric shock study, in which, in which he challenged the view that German soldiers were inherently evil. However, instead of actually using German individuals, he used American participants and did not actually take into consideration the difference between German and American cultures. Um, biased research can obviously lead to biased theories and cross-cultural research is not always valid. So for example, it could be hard to translate and interpret answers and behaviours correctly because obviously everyone in different cultures behaves in a slightly different way and replications are hard to do as procedures have different meanings in different cultures. Um, and samples should be representative and research should recognise cultural relativism. So that is basically that bottom point is just how to avoid cultural bias. And then looking at free will and determinism. So free will is when people choose how to behave without being a response to external or biological factors. Behaviour is explained by decisions and intentions, however it is subjective because um, an individual may think that they're acting on their free will but actually influenced by other factors. And those with psychological disorders, disorders don't necessarily have free will. And the approaches that follow the, the that believe in the sort of idea of free will is cognitive, um, but obviously this is sort of as a form of soft determinism because they also have they also support the idea of determinism, and then it's also humanistic as well. And then looking at determinism, um, all physical events occur in cause and effect relationships, and our thoughts, beliefs, and behaviours are determined by past events. It is thought of as being scientific, but as unfalsifiable. 
And again, the approaches that support this idea of determinism is Freud via hard or psychic determinism, the biological, which is hard or biological determinism, um, cognitive, again, soft determinism, and behavioural, which is hard or behavioural determinism. Um, often, I know there have been questions in the past like, that I looked at in, I think, the exam structure video that was like, name like three types of, um, or name two types of determinism. And so for that, you could do either hard or soft determinism, or you could do the psychic, biological, or behavioural determinism. I just wanted to make sure you, that it was all there for you guys to look at. So moving on to holism and reductionism, the holism is um, assuming that human be behaviour is more complex than processes that science has studied. So um, our behaviour is the product of different influences which all interact, essentially the interactionist approach. Um, and allow this allows the study of complex behaviour but cannot isolate, but it is quite hard to isolate variables. And so it's hard to establish a cause and effect relationship, although it is supported by the psychodynamic psycho approach and the humanistic as well. However, on the other side of, that, side of that, you've got reductionism, which is the scientific view of explaining complex topics by reducing them to their simplest structures. So, for example, um, a reductionist statement would be that t testosterone is the cause of violent behaviour in criminals. Um, it can be easier to establish cause and effect, but often ignores other influences, and this is supported by biological approach, so biological reductionism, cognitive, um, which is machine reductionism, and behaviourist, which is environmental reductionism. And then looking at the nature-nurture debate, so nature is the idea that innate characteristics are determined by our physiological and genetic factors, and this is supported by the psychodynamic, biological and cognitive approach. Um, whereas nurture is the influence of the environment and learning experiences. And again, you've got psychodynamic because obviously experiences can result in fixation during the psychosexual stages. Um, biological, the environment influences brain development and cognitive environment is needed for the genetically determined process of development to unfold. But then purely pure the, the approaches that purely believe in nurture are behaviorist and humanistic but obviously it can be hard to separate nature and nurture um Plomin et al identified three types of genotype environment correlations and this is passive so there's similar genes people with similar genes experience similar environments uh reactive which is when genetically determined characteristics may shape experiences and active. Those with particular inherited genetics seek out certain environments shaping their behaviour. And Bandura called this reciprocal determinism. And nature and nurture sort of ideas can also be studied by family studies, adoption studies and twin studies. And again nowadays there is a lot of interaction between the both, so nature and nurture, known as the interaction, interactionist approach. It is sort of similar to the idea that psychodynamic, biological and cognitive support both the nature and nurture side of the debate. Moving on to ideographic and nomothetic approaches. So ideographic focuses on the individual in detail, looking at what makes people different rather than developing universal laws. Um, it tends to be studied using case studies, interviews and observations and develops um, qualitative and uses qualitative methods and to provide qualitative data. Uh, it's a more complete explanation of behaviour and can help to develop nomothetic laws, but obviously it's hard to generalise and less scientific, and this is supported by psychodynamic and humanistic. And then you've got the nomothetic approach, which applies general laws and theories to explain behaviour across a whole population. Um, laboratory experiments and correlational research are used to develop quantitative data. Obviously, it's more controlled, objective and scientific than ideographic. It lacks ecological validity and individual differences are often ignored. But this is supported by the psychodynamic, biological, cognitive and behaviourist approaches. And then lastly, looking at socially sensitive research. So researchers have to follow ethical guidelines as well as consider ethical implications when approaching the findings. Um, it may highlight social issues that create negative reactions in society, 
and certain groups in society may be stigmatised and laws may be passed to d disadvantage some people. So a couple of uh, examples of this, so research into genetic influences. When looking at criminal behaviour, research may act as a defence against conviction or stigmatise those with relevant genes, even when they don't sh haven't shown any antisocial behaviour, which could lead to a possibility of compulsory genetic testing. And whilst this could be helpful for finding finding whether an individual has disorders such as schizophrenia, it can also lead to anxiety and stigma, especially as people can have a genetic vulnerability but then never develop the disorder. Um, and then also using race as an independent variable, so IQ tests have shown racial differences in intelligence. Um, it can be argued that it's not appropriate to pursue this further in case of social tension and often discredited due to methodolo methodological problems with the IQ tests as they are found to be biased towards certain social cultural groups. But some argue this research breaches ethical issues, whilst others believe it can help society as a whole. So that's it for this video. It's super, super quick. There's not too much to learn on this topic. But I think it's good to have a I think it's good to have a good amount of knowledge for this topic just because I think you can use it then to help you in the exam to sort of think of evaluation points. So now that you sort of know more about the ideographical nomothetic or the nature nurture sort of ideas, you can use that to apply to other theories and research to sort of and help you evaluate it on the spot if you can't remember anything. <clears throat> so I think it's really, really important just for that sort of perspective, because I know a lot of people panic about um, remembering evaluation, because I know I definitely did. But I'd like to sort of use this issues and issues and debates topic um, because you can if you know it well enough, it can sort of help you in developing your knowledge. Or, and you can sort of evaluate things on the spot. But I hope that helps, guys. And I, um, if you're watching this on the day that I've published this, then I will see you at about eight o'clock tonight for the live stream. And yeah. I hope this you guys found this video helpful.